Good evening, Democrats. Oh, man, they got the lights really super shiny here. Um, welcome to the Lowndes County Democratic Party meeting of January the 7th. Ooh, it says 2012. It's not 2012. 2013. Um, Start is still getting the hang of writing the new date. Um, if you would um, join with me, uh, rise, and we would observe a moment of silence for those who serve our country, especially those who serve abroad in harm's way. Thank you, and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, when you came in, there was a sign-in sheet. Um, if you didn't sign in, please do. It helps us to keep track of um, who's interested, who's here, and the state party likes to know that we have a viable party. Um, you also should have received um, two sets of minutes from December. One of them it was from our general meeting, and one of them was from the elections of the officers. Uh, if you've had time to review those, I would entertain a motion to accept them. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, Jim Parker will bring us our financial report. All right, we began. Hello, can you hear me? Is that working? Yeah. All right. Uh, we began the month uh, with a balance of 1970 and 62 cents. And we ended the month with a balance of $2,263.25. So we start the new year pretty good. Um, in, in 2012, we had most of our money come from the qualifying fees from the candidates, and we were um, very um, restrained in our usage of that. Our biggest expense was, um, well, uh, keeping the office open, obviously, and then also we sent the slate cards. So this year we don't have a lot of qualifying fees, so we are completely dependent on your dues. Um, so when you came in, you probably got a, a membership form. This is the beginning of the membership season. Um, membership is $25 for individuals, $40 for families, $15 for students, seniors, and military. Every dollar helps us, um, and if you can give us an extra donation, um, we really appreciate that too. It helps us to keep the office open, and it gets to be a pretty busy place down there. People call in, um, people stop in. Uh, it's a, quite a jolly place to be. Um, this evening, our, um, we have several of our elected officials here. We have Joyce Evans from the County Commission, uh, W.G. Walker from uh, Tax Assessors, and anyone else? Not yet. I'm expecting some others. Um, I would like to call W.G. to the microphone to talk a little bit about Tax Assessors and then to introduce our speaker. Good afternoon. Good to see all y'all. Happy New Year. Being in Lowndes County, we all have a special thing. We are the only county out of 159 that likes our tax assessors. So that means we answer to y'all. And not only do you, you don't get there, no post. I mean, we got posts, but we don't have boundary. So really, you get to vote on all three of your tax assessors, which is highly unusual. So it's a unique thing, and I'm, I've always say I'd rather uh, answer to the people of Lowndes County, and we also answer to the Department of Revenue. They have a lot of guidelines that we have to live by and through. So, but we also listen to you and we take anything that that we need to even talk to 
the state about or anything that changes or anything might coming up. Uh, they might pay attention especially to the legislative section. There's a lot of things that's going to come up on taxation in the uh, Georgia Assembly by looking at uh, visit that this week and kind of went over a lot of it. So there, of course, just because it's going to be presented doesn't mean that it'll be uh, passed, but still they're going to consider it. One of the biggest problems that we have right now uh, is repossessed homes uh, and all neighborhoods is having this same problem and it's and the uh, General Assembly and Department of Revenue says we will consider repossess home in our assessment. So we do look at that. And this past year, we sent out around 5,000 lower assessment, mainly because of repossess homes and uh, the economic downturn that had created a lot of this problem. And through Georgia Trend magazine, give you an idea how bad bad is. Georgia leads the nation in bank closures. Georgia leads the nation in the highest uh, foreclosure rate in the USA. One third of all homes in Georgia is underwater. And that was the biggest problem we had with the 5,000 that we lowered here. The biggest complaint we had is, hey, don't take mine down. I'm already under water enough. I, I, I don't need to have to look at that too. But you know, we can't look at it as, when it goes up, we got to stay on top of it. When it goes down, we got to stay on top of that too. So kind of good with the uh, bad there. In the first, first quarter, of 2012, the Consumer Distress Index, which I didn't know existed, but it does, and a measure of the financial condition of the average American household, Georgia ranks number two. In the housing category, we are number one. So that's going to show there's a lot of stress out here because of the home prices, and and it's they you know, a lot of it not self-inflicted. It just a lot of things just kind of fell in place. I would like to introduce our chief appraisal, uh, Silas Hobar. He comes from uh, Waycross, Georgia. Happened to be the same place that we also stole the county manager from. So yeah, we, we found a lot of good people that uh, come through uh, Waycross. So any question you might have, uh, he would be the one that would can get down to the nuts and bolts of all this. Thanks, sir. Evening. How's everybody doing? Um, first off, uh, I don't know if most, I'm sure most of y'all are aware, but uh, W.G. Walker, or sorry, Doyle Kelly was originally going to speak to y'all some this afternoon. Uh, last week he suffered a moderate stroke and he's in the hospital right now, so Everybody, please keep him and his family in your thoughts and prayers. Um, I guess uh, I could start going into kind of what we do uh, on a daily basis, what the overall goal of the Board of Assessors is. Um, we're in the business of making people happy. Uh, if any of y'all have ever actually been, thank God I got to laugh, because that's the only joke I got slated for this entire thing. Um, Again, my name is Silas Robar. I'm the chief appraiser for the Board of Assessors. Um, we have a elected board in this county. It consists of three elected members, which is Mike Hill, who this is his first term, uh, W.G. Walker, who's on his third term, I believe, and Doyle Kelly, who's serving his third term as well, or sorry, fourth term as chairman. Um, in the end, but we, what our main goal is is to have every property proportionally weighted in the digest so that nobody pays no more of their fair share of taxes than they are due. Um, that sounds fairly easy, um, except for it's, it's, there's a lot of moving parts and I'm going to brush over a lot of those, so uh, please feel free to, well, if you would hold your questions until we get done and then, you know, 
fire them at me. Um, we have a staff of 21 people. Um, not all of those people are uh, appraisers by their job description, but every person in our office, or almost every person in our office, and their job duties require that they be uh, appraisers um, you know, certified. Now that's by the Department of Revenue and Georgia standards, not by the Georgia Real Estate Board standards for fee appraisers. Uh, we have 10 people in real property. Real property is going to be your land and any permanent structures affixed to that land. Um, that's made up of six people in residential um, appraisals, one supervisor. You've got two people in commercial and one person who works exclusively on land. That would be mainly your, your rural land uh, that that person works on. We have two people in the mobile homes section. We actually go out and look at what you, you have 3,747 pre-bill mobile homes. Um, pre-bill is going to be a mobile home that's sitting on land that the person either doesn't own or they're not eligible to homestead that mobile home on. Um, we also have an additional 1,720 uh, homesteaded mobile homes. All of those mobile homes still, unless the title's been surrendered for a certificate of uh, permanent uh, occupancy, all those mobile homes still must place, display a tag, and we're actually charged with going out there and making sure these people do display that tag. Um, we have one, one personal property appraisal, and she is completely overloaded, but luckily our person, we've got a person in mobile homes that comes over and helps. Uh, they're staffed with five, over 5,000 personal property accounts to deal with in each year. Um, we've got a data entry staff of four that uh, they, they touch everything that gets done uh, in our office. Um, we have a, one appraisal coordinator, we have a sales analyst and uh, data entry tech and the clerk are all underneath the data entry section. We have two people in mapping. Um, I'm sure if any of y'all have ever worked in anything real estate, y'all come and looked at our maps or perhaps just looked on our website and seen our maps on your own. Um, we also have the board secretary and myself. That rounds out your 21 uh, staff people. Um, as far as the digest goes, we're, we're required to appraise all property within the county boundaries, and that's going to be all real and personal property at fair market value. Now, as WG mentioned earlier, we are now required by law to consider those foreclosed properties or those resales on the, on the foreclosed properties in our determination of fair market value. Um, luckily, we were, we, we've been fairly low the past several years on our assessments, so we have been letting the values in the areas where it is falling fall down to our values that we had set because we were, at, for the most part, we were already at 2002 values was where we were actually at. So we're, we've been letting values hold for the most part, except for in some of your more active neighborhoods where we, you know, we were, we were tr just busting to try to keep up with them and now that everything's starting to fall back, they have seen a greater reduction in the past couple of years. So there are some areas, like WG mentioned, that have went down, and I actually it wasn't 5,000 WG, it was 15,000, I believe. If I'm, mistake, if I'm not mistaken, 15,000. Yeah, yeah that, that, w that had a reduction. Um, as far as duties, another one is uh, classification and stratification of all properties within the county. Um, that's going to be, is it commercial, is it residential, is it uh, industrial, agricultural, brownfield, historic, preferential, conservation use. Forest Land Protection Act, and it goes on and on and on as far as those uh, codes go, as well as stratification, which is going to be a number normally, which is going to tell you whether it's improved, if it is small acre track, large acre track, or um, uh, production storage buildings or whatnot. Um, now, when you get into personal property, personal property, they actually, you know, they actually go with, you know, is it an airplane, is it inventory, or what have you. Um, we're also tasked with maintaining all tax records and tax maps. Um, I actually, uh, we 
Well, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself here. We basically had about, uh, I've spoken with the, or is anybody familiar with Valor? The Valor Project, okay. Well, I spoke with the director of Valor today, uh, Rachel Strong. I believe she's the director. Um, and she told me that our tax map, or our parcel layer is what we call it, is the second most important base layer that you have to work from. The first most important ba base layer that you got to have is going to be the roads. The second most important base layer you got to have behind that is going to be your, your tax parcel layer. Now, we might be the second most important base layer to work from, but we actually, can, we actually have over one third of all data that they make, that Bauer maintains comes from the tax assessor's office, the, the data that we actually maintain in our CAMA system. Um, so we hold on to a lot, and they only use a fraction of what we actually maintain in our records. Um, we have to identify and track all owner info. We have to identify all the parcel locations with a parcel identification number, the actual address, uh, when we have it, the legal description. Um, we maintain all sales records uh, through you know, deeds, plats, PT61 information, or you know, that's where we get our information from and then we list the actual reference numbers for you. Um, we have to send out every year, I, I believe everybody in here who owns property should have got an assessment notice from us this year. Uh, that's a little bit different than what you're used to. In the past, you didn't get but uh, assessment notice whenever you had a change, because it was called the change of assessment. Well, now we have the notice of assessment. Um, so we send, a, we blanket send it out to everybody gets an assessment notice from here going forward, so don't be surprised by that. Uh, that assessment notice will also have a, um, an estimated tax bill on there. If y'all would please make sure when you read that, that's an estimated tax bill. It's calculated from that current assessment that we have on the notice and then the prior year's millage. So it is subject to change, okay? Um, at that time, whenever we're getting ready to work on the digest, once we're closing up shop, which is gonna be usually around, it'd be nice if it was around May, but it usually gets on into June. Um, we forward all of our raw data from our camera system over to the tax commissioner's office, and the tax commissioner compiles all of that data into the digest. Now, the digest is just basically taking all that information, breaking it down into its classes, strats, counts, um, she can take all that information and actually put it into, uh, you know, four sheets, basically. I mean, that's, that's not all that's included, but it, that little summary is going to be four sheets of the entire 47,000 plus parcels, 5,000 plus uh, personal property accounts, and around 6,000, or sorry, 5,000 uh, mobile homes. Um, How's all this done? Uh, real property, uh, like I said, is comprised of residential, commercial, and land coordinator. Um, right now what we're going through is the uh, returns time. So between January the 1st and April the 1st is a time for you to make a return on your property. If you haven't, I highly encourage all of you to come in and uh, make a return. That helps us know ahead of time, you know, if we have any mistakes out there we need to correct. Could be that we haven't put something on. It could be something like you might have a privacy fence you filled in your pool a couple of years ago, and we've got it on there as you know adding value. Um, also, you can check on you know do you have all of the homestead exemption that you're afforded to have. Uh, so that would be this would be the time to sign up for that, as well as if you want to get into the conservation use program or any of the other covenants. They all have a deadline for you to sign up on. Uh, April the 1st. We have uh, what will be coming after this dead after April the 1st, once we send the notices out. And by the way, on that notice, it'll tell you, you got 45 days from the date of that mailing to appeal it. And that's when we get into our appeal season. Um, that can last for forever. In fact, we're still working on last year's appeals right now. It's mostly stragglers, but it, it, it can draw out. Um, we also have, uh, let's see, if, if anybody's not aware, you can actually, when you appeal, you can actually appeal it to the Board of Equalization, which is a very informal, easier process to go through. We also have the 
county hearing officer, which is an option if you have a non-homesteaded piece of property in excess of a million dollars of value. Uh, there's arbitration, which is a binding arbitration. It's a slightly more costly way to go, uh, but may not be as costly as Superior Court, which is the final option that you have. Um, on a daily basis, those uh, real property appraisers are tasked with uh, doing their sales reviews. That Whenever there's a sale that happens, any kind of sales transaction, they go out and review it um, to, so that we know what the state of that property is. That's especially important on these foreclosures. God knows what shape they're in whenever they sell. If you don't get out there quickly and find out, you may have some bad numbers on that sale that you're using in your sales ratio analysis to put values on others because it could be in it could be in horrible shape and inside, and, and you don't know if you're coming about coming around four or five months later. Um, they're also doing building permits. Uh, we get keyed on to any most most of our changes by building permits, as well as parcel to parcel inspections, which is when we just kind of or when we got the time and we're riding through. If we hadn't inspected in a long time, and we're running through and looking at you, and we just run up on some changes. <laughs> 